I polled 5,000 hockey fans and asked them what they thought the best era of NHL hockey was. And very unsurprisingly, 62% of people answered the 2010s. The 2010s were filled with some of the best talent we've ever seen on the ice, with players like Sidney Crosby, Alex Ovechkin, Patrick Kane, and Steven Stamkos, as well as some emerging stars like Connor McDavid and Austin Matthews. We also saw some of the best goalies of all time, like Henrik Lundqvist, Carey Price, and Jonathan Quick. And with these great players saw the rise of some dynasties and many rivalries that shaped the league today. It is no doubt that players of today have taken the game to a whole new level with their unmatched skills and abilities. From jaw-dropping stick handling to lightning fast speed and precise shots, the stars of the league today are redefining what's possible on the ice. It's like watching a non-stop highlight reel every game that's played. I mean, 20 years ago, could you ever even think of a Zegras pass happening, or even multiple Michigans happening? It just wasn't possible during the height of physicality in the NHL. Now, I know some old hockey fans may complain that there's no physical play today, and the game's gotten soft. But the NHL shift towards a more talent-focused game and a less physical game brings many benefits. It allows players to showcase skills we've never seen before, which opens the game for even more creativity. And not only does less physicality allow for more exciting games and plays, but it also allows for players of all sizes to make an impact. And the 2010s was the first time that we ever saw this change in the NHL. From the beginning of the century to the mid-2010s, hockey saw a huge drop in physical play, which allowed for smaller players like Crosby and Kane to truly dominate the league. I mean, Johnny Gaudreau, after dominating college hockey, was drafted in the fourth round of the 2011 draft, mainly because he was listed at 5'6 going into it, and now he's one of the best players in the league, earning $10 million a year. The 2010s excited viewers with many elite players during their primes, like Crosby, Ovechkin, Kane, Stamkos, Giroux, Carlson, and too many more to list off. And sure, other eras of hockey had immense talent, like the 80s and 90s, but I think that the 2010s was the first era where we saw so many talented players spread across the league. And all these talented players, of course, led to some pretty stacked teams, and these stacked teams led to some dynasties. Of course, we had the back-to-back -back cups for the Penguins in 2016 and 2017, we had the two cups for LA in 2012 and 2014, and between all those, we obviously had the three cups in six years for the Chicago Blackhawks, which is pretty much how good a modern-day dynasty can get. So, to start the decade, we had Patrick Kane and the Blackhawks win their first Stanley Cup of many, ending a 49-year drought in Chicago. In 2011, the Bruins beat the Canucks in an exciting seven-game series, which led to utter chaos in Vancouver. In 2012, we saw the last seed in the Western Conference, the LA Kings, beat the legendary Marty Brodeur and the Devils in six games. In 2013, we saw the Blackhawks beat the Bruins, scoring two goals in 17 seconds to win Game 6, and the team's second cup in just four years. Twenty fourteen saw the Kings beat the Rangers in double OT of Game Five to capture their second Stanley Cup in three years. Twenty fifteen, the Blackhawks completed their dynasty and won their third Stanley Cup in six years, cementing themselves as one of the greatest teams in the salary cap era. Twenty sixteen, the Penguins beat the Sharks in six games, and the following year they beat the Nashville Predators in six games, making Crosby, Malkin, Latang, and Flurry three-time champs and of course, making Phil Kessel a two-time champ at the time. In 2018, Ovechkin finally won his first cup after many years of disappointment. And finally, in 2019, we saw the Blues, who were in last place in December, beat the Bruins in seven games to win their first Stanley Cup in history. Every single cup winner I just named was significant, whether it's the Hawks three and six, the Penguins back to back, or the Blues underdog story, every Stanley Cup winner had its own excitement. And with these exciting playoffs throughout the decade, rivalries were revived and even some new ones were formed. The early 2010s saw the birth of the rivalry between the two juggernauts of the West who traded Stanley Cups back and forth, the LA Kings and the Chicago Blackhawks. From 2010 until 2015, the only teams that won the Stanley Cup were the Kings in 2012-2014, the Blackhawks in 2010, 2013, 2015, and the Bruins in 2011. The rivalry reached its peak in 2013 and 2014, where they faced each other in two straight conference finals, each team winning one and then going on to win the Stanley Cup. 
Now, another rivalry that was revived rather than born was the rivalry between the three California teams. Naturally, when there's three teams in a 350 mile radius of each other, there's going to be some bad blood. And that's exactly what happened in the early 90s when the Ducks and Sharks joined the Kings in California. But it wasn't until 2011 where all three teams were in the playoffs together, which immediately brought the simmering three-way rivalry to a boil. These three teams played a combined 37 games against each other in the playoffs during the 2010s, and most years one of these three teams were the favorite to win the Stanley Cup. And while all that was happening in the West, the Penguins and Capitals grew a new hatred for one another in the East. Between 2016 and 2018, the Pens and Caps faced each other in three straight second rounds, where the winner in each series went on to win the Stanley Cup. The Penguins in 2016 and 2017, and the Capitals in 2018. And of course, what made this rivalry so special was having the two greatest players in the world compete against each other. And I'm of course talking about Sidney Crosby and Alexander Ovechkin. Being the number one overall pick one year apart, Crosby and Ovechkin had been compared their whole career, and rightfully so, both debuting in the same year, both playing in the same division, both the star player of their team, both captains, both Stanley Cup champions, one a sniper, one a playmaker, Crosby and Ovechkin were destined to be rivals. Throughout their 18 years in the league, Ovechkin sits at 1,485 points, and Crosby is at 1,502 points, just 17 more than Ovi. They both have won a Stanley Cup, a Conn Smythe, an Art Ross, a Rocket Richard, a Hart, and a Ted Lindsay Award. Watching these two constantly battle against each other in their primes was a treat that hockey fans will probably never get again. Along with Crosby and Ovechkin, hockey fans got to watch Henrik Lundqvist and Carey Price. Although they may not be rivals, they are certainly two of the best goalies of all time, no doubt. Both goalies won a Vesna and both carried their teams to a deep playoff run during this time. Despite never winning a cup, prime Carey Price and Lundqvist were a thing of beauty for many years. Along with excellent talent and rivalries, the 2010s also introduced many new things for hockey fans. Two new teams were introduced in this era, that being the Vegas Golden Knights in 2017 and the rebirth of the Winnipeg Jets in 2011. Also, the beloved 3v3 overtime format was put into effect ahead of the 2015 season, and it did not disappoint, making it arguably the most exciting change to NHL hockey in recent years. And along with new rule changes, new generational players were brought into this league, like Connor McDavid and Austin Matthews. Now, this all might be recency bias, but with top-notch talent, some of the best assembled teams we've ever seen, rivalries between teams and players, and exciting new changes to the league, the 2010s were the absolute best time to be a hockey fan. And although the 2010s might have been peak excitement in hockey, we're still only three seasons into this decade, and with McDavid, Jack Hughes, Kale McCarr, Nathan McKinnon, Austin Matthews, and countless other young superstars, hockey fans should be very, very excited for what this era has to offer. Oh, look at 